Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. So I've got you guys an update on this big pattern change that will soon lead to many big snowstorms to roll right through uh, the United States as we get into, into January and the new year. I also got you guys an update on two uh, big storm systems that have uh, begun to cause big problems here over portions of the eastern U.S. This first one here, you can see, is the remnants of uh, what used to be a big Christmas blizzard. All right, that is located right here over Missouri. This is rotating around still a little bit, and it is now a uh, cutoff low, meaning that it is not attached to the jet stream, so it's pretty much free roaming out here, and the jet stream is not, uh, it's basically not riding the jet stream. The jet stream is not uh, carrying this away off to the east. This is going to stick with us for a few more hours before this pretty much completely fizzled out, but we're going to start to see a round two of some snow here for our folks in in portions of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. All right. And then as you can see, we also do have a pretty big rainstorm here uh, that's impacting portions of the Northeast. We've got a group of thunderstorms moving their way up towards southern New England here. This is coming up from the Delmarva era. So very heavy rainfall coming in here. You can see so many oranges and yellows. All right. That is signifying very heavy rainfall and some thunderstorms with that. So maybe a rumble of thunder tonight, maybe some relatively gusty winds, but I don't even think that the gusty winds is going to come into play. I think it's just going to be a rumble of thunder, um, but definitely a flooding concern out there. All right. I do think that uh, the flooding concern has uh, upgraded since last night. All right. So we'll talk about that. Um, but other than that, we are pretty much uh, quiet for the most part. Some rain coming through uh, portions of Florida, the midsection of Florida. But other than that, we are uh, pretty dry for the most part. So taking a look here at our alerts, you can see that we don't we don't have much going on right now. But up into portions of the north central United States, we have a special weather statement. All right, um, mostly because of those uh, conditions left behind our major winter storm system. All right, um, we actually do have some flash flood warnings or uh flood warnings i should say um interesting to see that actually coming up here into portions of uh southeastern north dakota all right so maybe some of that excess uh, or maybe some of that accumulating ice that freezing rain has actually that actually changed back to uh steady rainfall all right so we actually do have some flash flood warnings up in that area all right, uh, into portions of Ohio and then out towards northwestern PA, south, extreme southwestern New York State. All right, uh, not not uh, down here near New York City, but rather over towards the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, um, uh, and and just this entire region here. All right, we can see we have dense fog advisories. All right, so that fog is actually uh, cleared for most of us in southern New England, but it's actually moved off to uh, the west. All right, and we can actually also see that into portions of New Jersey, and this is going into New York City, I believe. Um, and then really in, in, in this general era, we have a few counties that are under uh, flood watches right now because, we again, we have that big uh, flood event that's, uh, that's going on down here. And so that's what we see here. A lot of counties, by the way, out towards uh, – out towards – Philadelphia appear to be under a flood, flash flood warning, so we'll click for more information here. All right, and yeah, that, wow, look at all this. All the way up from Allentown, uh, all the way down through, you know, just to the west of Philadelphia, so all the way down through Re uh, Reading and then Wilmington, and all the way down into uh, um, Delaware and Maryland in those northern counties, we actually do have uh, I believe we actually do have flood warnings, uh, although these might, these could be, uh, I believe these might be uh, flood advisories, and actually they might be, but I do think that this this band of rainfall could actually definitely prompt uh, f uh, flash flood warnings for this area soon, um, but just look at this massive area, and looking at this radar really up close, you can see this giant band of rainfall um moving through and so we look at the weather story here this is the official national weather service forecast widespread uh one to two inches in this area um but i really do think that many people out here are going to see two inches i think some people could even get up to three inches because you can see in this little orange pocket all right right by the delaware maryland uh and uh pennsylvania borders are um where they meet all right that's where you could actually see around three inches 
of rain. All right. And so that's going to take care of our alerts. We go over to the name 3K model for the North Central United States. So take a look here. Uh, we've been talking about this big snowstorm. This is probably the third or fourth day that I've been talking about this. Um, so it's still with us. All right. It seems like it's completely gone if you look on radar. All right. Um, and it just looks like kind of a different piece of energy has moved into the region. But it's no, it's actually the same system. It's just uh, it's just became a cutoff low, which basically means that it's it's not part of the jet stream anymore because the jet stream right here all right, right now is coming up like this. All right, there's a big ridge going into um, the northeastern U.S. And you can see that this low pressure center is way back here into Missouri. All right, so what we're calling this is a cutoff low, um, and it's got very cold air loft. This is a big uh, area of cold air here that it's uh, pretty much just, it's br it's pulling all that cold air in. All right, so that's why we see a lot of snow with this system. So this was a story, uh, we'll put this to... Um, this is 8 p.m. today, so this was about two hours ago. All right, we had some very, very light flurries moving over portions of uh, northeastern uh, Missouri into portions of southern Iowa, and then some rainfall if you're more off to all right, the east, where some of that warm air is still left behind, and we're still not quite below that 32-degree mark. All right, um, but notice how this band quickly gets a lot heavier as we get into uh, the overnight hours of tonight, and this moves into the St. Louis metro area, and so uh, that could definitely bring a fresh one to two inch coating of snow um, for you guys already by 3 a.m. We're getting to the wee hour, wee morning hours here um, tomorrow, and it's still snowing barely in portions of uh, of uh, of east central Missouri, and then even into central south central Illinois, it's actually getting a little bit heavier. All right, so some tiny pockets and bands here of snowfall could actually be the big story here tonight, and then into tomorrow, we're still going to be dealing with the system, and the main part of it hasn't even get got started. It's this uh piece of energy up here that's left over it's got many different parts of the system all right but it's this piece of energy that's going to be moving uh south all right like that it's eventually it's going to end up all the way down into tennessee all right and so we can see a lot more uh sufficient snow here or i don't know i don't think sufficient would be the word or um substantial snowfall moving its way down here through uh, Wisconsin and then Illinois. All right, and so that definitely could be moderate to heavy at times as we get through the afternoon hours of tomorrow. And then, you know, by the time we get to the really just past dinner time, all right, it's probably snowing in all portions of Illinois. So central Illinois, um, I know I got a friend, Davis does weather, I will uh, tag him are, uh, in, I'll put them in the uh, comments and in the description. I, I think that you could definitely get, you know, a few inches of snow tomorrow because this band looks definitely heavy enough to uh, produce, you know, accumulating snow and it's going to last for a few hours. So, yeah, I definitely think that you have a good shot at seeing some accumulation tomorrow. And this could actually be heavy at times because we see a few bands roll through. Um, we could actually see the snow actually, it's, it's, uh, pushing out as far west as St. Louis, uh, Missouri here. All right, so the St. Louis metro area could get yet a second band of snow uh, tomorrow night uh, into, um, what is this, tomorrow night into Friday. Okay, and then we're going to just have basically lingering snow showers, but some snow could actually move all the way down into Kentucky. So Paducah, Kentucky, all right, that area of uh, western Kentucky could definitely see some snow. We could even see snow as far south as Tennessee. Okay, so uh, a very big area that's going to see just some isolated snow showers, but some of those pockets of snow is what could really bring um, the accumulations up a little bit, and that's going to be uh, really into portions of Illinois and then maybe uh, into portions of extreme southwestern Indiana, and maybe, just maybe, if this ticks farther west, which it's got a little bit of time to because there's still been some change in the forecast here, uh, this could actually get as far west as St. Louis, Missouri, where uh, this forecast for snowfall tails has gone up and down um, really all throughout today. But if you are back here into Ohio or if you're in uh, portions of central and northern Indiana and into Michigan, it'll most likely stay as an all-rain event for you guys. So a very cold rain 
All right, but some of that rain might change the snow on the backside, so extremely light snow showers, like you probably wouldn't even be able to see them, uh, is possible getting into Friday, okay? Um, but I really don't think that we're going to see uh, that much snow all the way out there. I think really it's just going to be out here in Missouri, Illinois, and Iowa. All right, so taking a look at your snowfall totals. All right, you can see it's pretty substantial. You know, I said, you know, for central Illinois, I think that that snow band could definitely bring uh, those snowfall totals up. And we see here on the NAM, all right, you know, around four, three, I would say two to four inches of snow for central Illinois. Um, going up to northern Illinois, though, look at this, six inches of snow, all right, um, is, is possible. And we go to uh, southern Illinois here. Again, six inches of snow, eight inches of snow possible. So this could actually turn out to be a big snowfall event for some of you guys out there in Illinois. It's really Illinois being the highlighted state, but this entire swath of uh, snowfall is um, is, is this this capable. The storm is capable of uh, producing snowfall totals over well over an inch here. Uh, we could we could even see snowfall totals reaching uh, to an inch as far west as. Uh, central Missouri, all right, where we can see around an inch of snow, maybe two inches into southern, uh, southern Iowa, all right, but into southern, uh, southern Wisconsin here, we could definitely be talking about one to three inches, and maybe if you're right by the border, maybe four inches is possible, all right, um, but please let me know out there, uh, what, what you guys are seeing, please, uh, you know, feel free to go outside on, a whatever it'll be, probably Friday, all right, and just uh, measure that snowfall and put it in the comments, and I'd really like to know what you guys are seeing out there, because that'd be really interesting to see, you know, who gets the golden, the, the who's the lucky winner, who gets the golden ticket here for most snow, but all the way out to the Indiana and Illinois border, uh, we actually do see seven inches of snow possible, all right, but yeah, for the entire state of Illinois, I would really say two to four inches is a good, uh, you know, a good, a good assumption on what, what you guys could get. But I think in these purple shades, these ice, these isolated bands guys could actually end up bringing, uh, a, you know, additional two to three inches of snow for some areas. And that would get you over five inches, maybe around six, seven, up to eight inches of snow. But, uh, going into Missouri here for the, uh, St. Louis metro area, three inches is the current forecast. All right. Uh, we don't have the blend of all models, um on pivotal weather because you actually need a subscription i don't have that all right um but i think that right currently they're forecasting two inches of snow so really i would say two to four inches for the st louis metro area but it's looking like if you're if you're in the northwestern portion of that area four to maybe four to five inches so it's going to be a very sharp cutoff you can see that it's many again it's many isolated areas because it's going to be hit or miss it's going to be if you get hit by one of those bands that brings heavier snow, um, you will see over uh, two, three inches. It really depends on the where you are. If you're in Illinois, all right, and you actually do get hit by one of those heavier bands, you'll get over four inches, all right, because you'll or you'll already be set at two to four inches. If you're in uh, Missouri, rather, like in the St. Louis area. All right, one to two inches is your, or one, you know, one to three inches is your good start. But if you get hit by one of those heavier bands, maybe four to five inches. All right, but just north of St. Louis, really two to three inches um, is, is what you could expect. But down into Indiana, all right, we could still see two to four inches. I would say one to four inches, really. Um, and something weird showing up here, uh, way up here in the northern Indiana, some pocket, a tiny pocket here showing up from for two to four inches of snow. So, you know, I think that's pretty much uh, out of the blue there. But I, but I do think that, you know, at, at this point, we're, it's pretty late for this to change completely. So I think that we could actually be dealing with snow as far north um, as uh, northern Indiana. But down into uh, Kentucky, we can still see one to two inches, maybe up to three inches, four inches, potentially uh, in near the Paducah, uh, uh, Bowling Green, Actually, no, I'm not sure if Bowling Green's out there, but definitely the Paducah area could see um, over two inches of snow. All right, so uh, that's going to take care of the uh, of the snow totals there for the Midwest. We take a look here at the northeastern U.S. We're going to be talking about this big uh, flooding threat 
year tonight. Uh, I wouldn't even say this would be really major, but it is a big flying threat because when you already have a saturated ground because it's been very, very foggy, just very, very wet conditions lately, um, then you, all, then you all, all of a sudden get a big outburst of rain and a lot of rain in a short amount of time. That's the recipe for flooding here. That's what we're going to be seeing tonight. All right, and so starting out here, we're, we put this motion 10 p.m. tonight. There's that heavy band we saw on the radar uh, moving right up through Philadelphia and then the Del Marva area. So this is going to be impacting D.C. We've got thunderstorms, showers and thunderstorms moving right through this area here. Um, but really just scattered rain showers for the most part. Other than that, as our pop-off uh, pop off low moves up the coast and then that heavy rainfall overnight moves through uh, the New York City metro area into northern New Jersey. We're probably going to see thunderstorms stay off to the west of New York City, um, but maybe, you know, four, th three, four, five in the morning, uh, tomorrow morning, so like the wee morning hours of tomorrow, we could actually be dealing with thunderstorms as far east as Long Island. All right, um, but southern New England's going to get uppercutted by the system here, and so we're actually going to start to see um, also, some heavy rains impact your area, that area. All right, um, but this continues to move up uh, into uh, really up into the northeast coastline and then up into the Gulf of Maine, where we're going to start to see some of that uh, rainfall change over to frozen precipitation, frozen mix out there, um, and then change over to snow. So, interesting actually how we, we go from this being an all rain situation where we have a big ridge actually. It's getting pushed off to the east to a uh, win a wintry setup here. And so notice how this uh, we see this switch over to another low pressure system here. So this is all from that one big blizzard, all right? And it's basically split up into a lot of new low pressure systems. And that's what we see here once again. Our old one would be out here at this point. Now we see another one here, 1,001 millibars. And so you've got a new piece of energy that's, right over the Great Lakes with an oncoming cold front. And so that's just setting the stage for a at least a small uh, lake effect snow event. And so we see what happens here. We put this in motion. Uh, this is Friday uh, the 29th. So what is today? Today is uh, today's Wednesday. All right. So we're, yeah, this would be Friday. All right. And uh, we can st actually start to see some of that rainfall changing over to snow as this uh, storm becomes... Uh, and this is going to be another cutoff low, actually, because this would be way behind that where that cold front, that warm front meets so the jet stream there. Um, but some of that rain could change to snow, and we could start to see some snow bands and some snow showers move their way through portions of PA and western New York State. All right, so that's going to be for the morning hours, the very early morning hours of uh, Friday into Saturday. Um, but yeah, I do think that really. It's going to be mostly a rain event, all right? But it's going to be very wet in this region for uh, a few days out here. Um, but I think as we get later into the week, some of those rain showers could change uh, over to snow. All right? So we look at the uh, current projected rainfall totals uh, on the NAM per kilometer model, and it doesn't look very impressive, um, but... It's really not even looking as impressive as yesterday's run, but it's it's definitely increased for a smaller area here, and that's exactly what we see here in that area um, that's being impacted by those heavy bands of rainfall right now. As as I speak, that we looked at earlier in the in the update uh, at the beginning where we looked at the radar. All right, that's that same band that's producing these uh, two to four inch uh, purple shades here. All right, pretty much going all the way up from again uh, west northwestern uh, northwestern New Jersey all the way down through the Del Marva region. All right, that's where we can see definitely two to four inches, and that's certainly enough to lead for to flash flooding. But that flooding would only last throughout the night. All right, but from New York City, southern New England into Long Island, and then. Uh, Connecticut here, we could definitely see really one to two inches. All right, but I think that flooding threat's going to stay uh, down to the south, and that could actually go all the way down to Virginia. All right, so a pretty decent, decently big area seeing uh, higher amounts of rainfall, but this entire general area, really one to two inches is what you could expect. Um, but if you're just south of southern New England, all right, 
and then off to the west as well. So really southwest of southern New England, I should say. Um, and this entire area here, two to four inches is what you could expect. And that is definitely enough to lead for, to flooding. So if you, for some reason, are on those roadways uh, very late tonight, like, you know, around midnight or past midnight, all right, um, just be aware that there, there most likely will be a few, uh, at least, you know, I wouldn't say moderately flooded roads, but some definitely some flooded roads uh, possible out there. Um, and remember, these are rainfall tunnels all the way out to Saturday because this storm system is going to take a long time to completely move out. All right, and so we still have some of that backside rainfall, those uh, rain showers um, that will be moving through. All right, so taking a look at our current excessive rainfall outlook from the Weather Prediction Center. All right, and so notice how this is on the day one outlook, and we haven't had that much rain as of today. Well, it's because that this band um, has actually, it's, it's, it's creeping up on us. It's getting very close, and really you would consider it being in play. All right, um, but this is where it is right now, that, that same area here in highlight in yellow. All right, so that same area that's being impacted by that heavy band of rainfall, it's moving up through Delmarva and then the Philadelphia area. But we can see, as of right now, we have a slight risk for flash flooding, which is an at least a 15% chance of flash flooding with, uh, within 25 miles of a point. But that's extending all the way up towards uh, southwestern Connecticut, uh, southwestern New York, all right, down into all of Long Island, um, and then all of New Jersey and then portions of uh, southeastern PA are included in this. Delmarva, all of uh, Delaware, and then into Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Annapolis, and then Washington, D.C. All right, um, this entire uh, area is under uh, up to a 39% uh, chance for uh, flash flooding. All right, surrounding areas are in that green risk, which is at least a 5% risk of flash flooding. I wouldn't expect much, maybe some wet surfaces there, obviously, because, you know, usually when you see an inch or two of rainfall, uh, some ponding on those roadways, um, but I don't think that we're going to see any flooding in that green area, but that yellow area, there's a, there's a chance for flash flooding, but it's not um, the highest that you'll ever see. All right, uh, and if you were wondering the day two outlook, uh, you don't have any chance for flash flooding day three. Uh, I don't believe so. Day four, I don't think so. And day five is uh, basically when the system is just not with us anymore. All right. So moving on here to the GFS model. This is the 18Z that we're looking at. We've been talking about this big pattern flip, all right, for a few days now. And it hit, It has pretty much started to, be, to come in play. All right. And the polar vortex is about to open up. And I do think that things are going to get very active here in – uh, as we get into January, we've been dealing with uh, stratospheric warming, all right, which basically means that the top of the globe is getting abnormally warm some portions. And so basically what's going to happen is we're going to start to see surging warmth that's been with us um, for quite a long time through December. That's all going to be shifting up to Canada, and we're going to be replaced by rounds and rounds of cold air as we get into January. And so that's what we're going to be looking at here on the GFS. So Taking a look at the latest run of the GFS, all right, we see what happens. We're going to be dealing with a lot of storminess as we get into January, all right, but when is that big storm system going to come up? Because I I have a hunch that we're going to get a very a major uh, cross-country, just a full-blown uh, snowstorm sometime in early January. And so, we, so we see if we can find a time frame for that based off the latest GFS, all right, and so we're getting to New Year's Eve here, and at this point, we have uh, a big uh, cold front coming down from Canada here. This is dipping well into the Midwest, the northern U.S., the northeast. All right, we're seeing more widespread cold air rather than just a smaller uh, cold blast coming down. All right, um, and so this is probably going to bring our temperatures uh, cons down considerably, um, but for a bigger area. And so you got more cold air backing up, backing this up coming out from the northwest, that's probably going to take over uh, this leftover warmth that's surging into the north, all right? And so at this point, it's looking possible that we could get a trough to set up uh, as this cold front swings down. All right, this is right around New Year's, so we've been tracking a storm system or a piece of energy, really, uh, that could eventually set up and develop here, 
All right, but that's definitely the the chance for that has decreased and it's been looking a lot weaker. All right, um, and we're getting into the morning of our New Year's here, and here it is. It's our peace of energy, that little blob of green that you're seeing just uh, streaking across uh, portions of the southeast, and it's basically just riding with the jet stream here. That Pacific jet stream is coming into action, and it's just going to take it away. And uh, really, once it gets it gets offshore, it you know it gets a little stronger, like all storms do, because it's it's you know picking up all of that moisture from the Atlantic, so maybe a little bit of a rainstorm for the Carolina coast. That's what we've been seeing with the latest model agreement. All right, so uh, it's really not looking like that storm is going to do much other than bring a lot of rain to the southeast, so uh, right around January 1st to uh, the 2nd here of our new year, that's when we're going to see that storm system come into play, so I'm pretty confident that that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to get any snow. I don't think we're going to get any snow out of that. All right, um, but I do think after that system, we're going to have a lot of different pieces of energy that are going to be flying around, all right, but we don't see any big system yet, all right, we're getting pretty far out into the run, we're getting to January 5th, so the, the uh, future here is uh, pretty uncertain, uncertain, and we're probably, this is all that's going to happen on your screen, really from now on, we're, is probably not going to happen, we, we, we see down here, and we actually do get a Gulf low that develops with a lot of heavy rain over the Gulf Coast. All right, and we've also got a big storm system that's coming out of the Pacific Northwest. And this is usually when things could happen um, and things could get bad very quickly. But I think that this storm is going to be on its own because if this were to happen, I know this is, again, this is going to change. All right, but if we got this set up, I think this storm would, it would be too late for these storms to connect and merge because this storm is already you know it's already get it's already gearing up basically to uh head up the uh east coast and bring a lot of, of uh, rainfall all right Be and this storm is still hanging out up towards canada and the pacific northwest so it has to get all the way really all the way over here all right um in time to uh gear up with that system and uh, really bring it on to the eastern west and so we see what happens with that and yeah we don't get that that system actually doesn't even um, ride, it doesn't even ride the jet stream side because it's south of the jet stream and it moves through Florida instead. And that other system actually moves through uh, Canada. All right. So we really don't see much other than just piece of energy flying around. That's really, you know, what it's been looking like until the end of the run. I think that, you know, the time frame for this is going to be January 6th to January 12th. I think sometime in there, we're going to get a very, very big winter storm, a snowstorm, because the GFS has continuously been hinting of a giant cool down here. You can see that, that we're, we're not even calling this a dip in the jet stream. This is just a widespread cool down here, uh, and this is getting as far south as the Mexico and United States border, all right? So we've just got a massive cool down right here. That's a big uh you know, I don't even want to say dip in the jet stream, just a massive cool down, all right? And you've also got a very big storm system, or piece of energy, I should say, uh, that is located right around the Gulf of Mexico, and it's bringing a lot of snow into uh, the, um, the the uh, plains there, and we see what happens, and it gets its own low pressure, all right, and bam, look at that. We've got a full-blown uh, winter storm here with a severe weather event on the south side of that, this is January 10th. All right, this is going to change, guys. But uh, this is going right through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and then into Missouri. And then this is just, you know, it's just evolving. And this becomes a massive winter storm, 972 millibars. That is gigantic. All right, and it's followed by, yet again, another massive uh, cool down here. Um, I mean, this storm would be very dynamic. It's probably going to become negatively tilted at this point all right it's got very strong winds this would be packed with very strong winds if this were to play out blizzard conditions for the midwest yeah this would be one of those highlights of the winter kind of storm systems that rides off from the northeast and the 966 millibar winter storm very rarely do you see a winter storm become that strong all right but we uh get to the end of the run here we're 384 hours out so it is, I don't want anybody 
to go out and tell uh, everybody that you know that there's going to be a big, a giant blizzard winter storm, all right, on January 12th. That's not going to happen, all right? Um, but we know what, what, what we're pretty certain is going to happen is that there's going to be um, a lot of pieces of energy that are, that are going to gonna be flying around out here. And then what I think is going to happen, many others do too, is that sometime in between January 6th and January 12th, there's going to be a big winter storm, all right? I'm not saying it's certainly going to be this one. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're not going to get a storm on January 12th because maybe we will, all right? I'm just saying that I think that we're going to get a big system in, in this time frame, but it's not going to be, it's not shape, it's not going to be this exact one. That's, that we already know that, all right, because that's just basically impossible. All right, but yeah, that's just a big signal on the GFS that we've been seeing throughout today, because we go to the 12Z. All right, what does the 12Z show? Well, we see that system come through, uh, go through the southeast, so it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um... But it shows that massive cool down a lot earlier. It shows it actually right after uh, that system. And so we get to January 4th, and we're already in that big uh, widespread cool down here. And then here comes a pr what looks like a pretty big system riding through the Gulf, uh, the Gulf Coast. All right, but that still uh, sorry, uh, moves right through the Pacific jet stream. A lot of these storms will get uh, swept up by that Pacific jet stream, just get a th it'll get thrown out to sea, all right? But if that Pacific jet stream gets tweaked up, uh, and it, 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 do it rather it doesn't go like this, um, but it actually goes like this, okay? That is where we could get a nor'easter threat um, because it looks like, but with with this opening up in the polar vortex, if we have, uh, if we have cold air in place by the time storm system mo moves up into the northeast, because of, uh because that Pacific jet stream uh starts to uh curve up after it moves through the southeast, that's where we could get a storm system that would become a nor'easter. But uh, we see another signal for right around the same exact time for a big snowstorm, and there it goes into the northeast, and that looks like a similar setup here with, yet again, it's showing a blizzard, full-out blizzard, blizzard conditions for the Midwest, all right, so yeah, there is a signal for a big winter storm, and this is right around that same time frame, once again, January 9th, January 12th, so it's too far out to break down this time frame a little bit more, all right, because we don't have a certain storm that we're, tr that we're following yet, all right, um, but all this is showing is this is showing a good signal, a healthy signal, um, for, so, for something big, um, inside that time frame. And so we look at the temperature anomalies on the 18Z or the look at the 12Z, cause I believe the 12Z is more reliable here as far as our temperature anomaly goes. And so starting out here, basically we're, we're still not seeing that big cool down yet. We're getting to, we'll put this to New Year's Eve. We have some tiny pockets of cold air moving their way through the the uh, upper Midwest here, and we can actually see temperatures getting down to as low as 8 degrees, 10 degrees below our historical average. That's going to quickly spread. We see actually some darker, uh, lighter pinks. All right, that's around 16 to 20 degrees below our historical average, so very cold. I mean, this is going to be bitterly cold out here because it's already very cold uh, this time of the year in the Dakotas, but when you have... Uh, temperature is getting 16 to 20 degrees below where we where we are, all right, with our current temperatures, which would be in the 30s at this point, all right, that's just going to make it, that's shaping up for it to be in the teens, all right, so very cold weather, um, starting off, kicking off January and the New Year's, all right, um, and we see some tiny pockets, some tiny waves of that polar vortex actually coming down into the northeast, so we could actually start to see um, the polar vortex influence our uh, temperature pattern here into, the, into uh, the northern United States as soon as uh, really once that time frame for that those big snowstorms begins. All right, um, we got another big uh, uh, warm up, another big warm up coming. And you know if this ridge in Canada becomes so big that you know it actually extends into the northern U.S., I right, some of us may miss out on that. A uh, big snowstorm that would definitely decrease our chances for a snowstorm because what you need for a snowstorm is you need a lot of cold air. Snowstorms 
uh, perform, they, they underperform when it comes to snow. All right, when there's less, uh, when there's uh, more warm air nearby and less cold air. All right, um, but here we go. We're starting to see more substantial cold air uh, moving in uh, January 10th here. All right, and you know at this point we're in La La Land. We're 372 hours out. All right, but also one big thing is that the GFS has been showing the Western U.S. becoming very, very cold all of a sudden, um, right around January 12th. So it looks like. January 12th, I mean, it's pretty crazy. The GFS is pinpointing January 12th, literally, as a very active day weather-wise here. Um, so maybe right around January 12th, we could be dealing with something big because the 12Z and the 18Z have both been showing multiple, you know, multiple runs of the GFS have been showing big cooldowns uh, right around the same uh, time frame there. So very interesting to see that. Uh, signal on the GFS for such a, you know, pinpoint time frame. But for the final part of the update, we look at our current projected snowfall totals out to January 12th. And here it is, that big snow signal. And, you know, when you get a blizzard that moves through, all right, on the GFS, the 18Z is usually hyped up. It's usually drunk uh, when it comes to snowfall and snowstorms. And so it's calling for three feet of snow into Missouri. All right, that's not going to happen. This is not, this is false information, guys. And you may be wondering why I'm showing this. The reason why I'm showing this is just because of the big signal that we're dealing with. It's not me trying to tell you guys the exact forecast of uh, how much snow you're going to see in your backyard from now to January 12th. It's me showing you the signal um, of the model showing a better chance for a snowstorm to impact your backyard all right, out to January 12th. And so we can see the entire eastern U.S. will split the United States in half here. The eastern half, very active, all right? I'm going to give you guys a check mark. Um, so right this this run, of the, uh, this run of the GFS is giving you guys a check mark here, all right, um, for a big round of big winter storms. All right, out to January 12th. The Western U.S., I, I'm going to give you guys, like, you know, in, in the middle, so we'll give you guys just an equal sign. All right, because I think we're going to, based off this run of the GFS, we see typical uh, mountain snowfall, and we also see the rest of, uh, you know, the rest of uh, these areas seeing really, you know, just a typical amount of snow. I don't, I really want to stay away from those snowfall totals because, you know, really we don't, uh, we don't want to get into the details when you're this far out, um, but just a big signal overall for um, big snowstorms. So that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for coming to watch. I'll see you guys in the next video. So stay tuned. I've got a lot more updates coming up. I've been pretty consistent with these updates. I'll, I'll let you guys know about my schedule. Um, I should be returning to school. Uh, this is going to be after New Year's, so we still got about a week left um, before I go back to school. So. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, by then, uh, it'll, you know, it, we, we will have uh, active weather, all right? Because I, you know, me personally, I really like active weather, so uh, I'm hoping that we're going to see a lot of snowstorms, but I don't know about you, um, but my job here is to keep you guys uh, all, you know, just ahead of every, ahead of everything, and uh, just uh, so that you guys know uh, what's going to be happening with the weather uh, across the United States. All right, so we'll continue watching the snow signal. I will continue watching the pattern change. Uh, you know, just stay safe out there if you're in the Northeast with that flooding threat. It's not gonna be that bad, so really just, uh, you know, uh, sleep through it tonight and then it should be fine uh, by tomorrow. Um, a big snow event there in the Midwest, a few inches of snow as possible. All right, um, but I think the big thing really is just what lies ahead in the January and what will the new year uh, greet us with? And will winter uh, suddenly burst and the uh, uh, polar vortex could uh, open up very, very soon? So uh, that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you, so much for, thank you so much for coming to watch. And I'll see you guys in the next